Thank you, Anjali. Um, hey guys, welcome. Uh, today's session is about Google BigQuery. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer community and a director of women for San Francisco. I started back in study group like a few years ago where I basically do sessions and discussions around interesting backend engineering concepts, beginner, advanced, intermediate, everything. And today's session is about Google BigQuery. Uh, we'll go through like the fundamentals of BigQuery, uh, what are data sets, tables, views, uh, queries, and stuff like that. This is more like a beginner level session. If you guys are interested in like more intermediate or advanced with like complicated queries and stuff like that, like let us know that I can work on a presentation for that. But this is just a basic intro to fundamentals of BigQuery. And I only focused on uh, topics that are more relatable and uh, easy to understand. So it's not daunting because Google Query, a big query can be, uh, it looks like a giant product and can be quite complicated. Uh, I always go through what backend engineering is uh, for every of my sessions. So in backend engineering is basically where we design, build and maintain server-side web applications. Uh, some of the concepts that we care about in backend engineering uh, client server architecture, networking, APIs, web fundamentals, microservices, databases, security, OS, so on and so forth. If you think about tech stack, it's a wide range. Uh, Java, PHP, .NET, our frameworks, languages, C Sharp, uh, Ruby, Python, REST, APIs, uh, that's the uh, standard. AWS, Node, SQL, NoSQL, all of this are considered backend because they encompass APIs, um, databases, different frameworks, different standards, and different platforms as well. Um, uh, so BigQuery, uh, before I start BigQuery, I felt like some of the words or buzzwords that you may or may not be familiar with, which is fine, but they are worth mentioning because that is the whole appeal of Google BigQuery. So um, some of the things that BigQuery offers is like, so it's serverless, so you can build and run application services without managing infrastructure. So we don't need an on-prem infrastructure system or servers and so stuff like that. You can build and run your services uh, on a remote system, which is on the cloud, and the cloud provider will take care of infrastructure, scaling, resource management, everything for you. So Google Query, uh, BigQuery provides the, that benefit. Highly scalable, the application can handle a large number of users, different workflows and different tasks, and also uh, large data sets. Uh, cost effect is quite straightforward a term. Uh, you look into cost benefit analysis and then the value of money, right, for your data and for your tasks and how much you're paying for a particular uh, platform. Uh, Multi-cloud, so uh, software as a service, applications supporting multiple cloud vendors, right, like MS. Azure is a vendor, AWS is a vendor, GCP is a vendor, right? So these are different cloud platforms and um, multi-cloud just means that you support all of these platforms, therefore most of their features. Uh, data Warehouse is basically a central data repository focused on uh, providing highly efficient data analysis and reporting and data warehouses are usually focused on some kind of business intelligence or business decision-making. So business analytics would be, tra you transform your data into insightful business decisions uh, that will help you make, uh, uh, from the data that you see, you can do predictive analysis and make better or improve business decisions. So these are some of the terms that are very common when it comes to Google BigQuery. Um, so Google BigQuery, right? Like it's a serverless architecture. So you don't have to worry about behind the scenes how this product or this platform is uh, supporting uh, your resources, it's supporting complicated queries, how efficient it is, um, how it does infrastructure management, scaling and stuff like that. Like the platform provides that out of the box, right? You don't have to worry about infrastructure. It's a serverless architecture. Um, scalability, basically in big, the whole point of BigQuery is to analyze big data sets. So you can analyze petabytes of data with like high performance, like efficient indexing, faster queries, complicated queries, uh, joins, and all of this complicated stuff you can do at a higher performance. Um, and integration, so we already talked about this. 
the beauty of BigQuery is that it can integrate with multiple different providers, cloud providers uh, behind the scenes. And uh, the biggest benefit, I guess, is it's the, it supports SQL-like query. So if you know SQL structured query language, if you know um, uh, basic commands, you can get started with querying a data set in BigQuery. If you have basic knowledge of like DDLs and DMLs uh, in SQL for querying and data analytics. Uh, BigQuery also supports data storage. So you can have large sets of data which have specific meaning and you can query different data sets at the same time. Like basically you can have five different data sets which store some kind of data which has some meaning and you should be able to query different data sets um, using SQL syntax, right? And each data sets have a table. So that is a structure that is followed. So uh, BigQuery is SQL. Uh, support SQL, right? So therefore it supports some form of structured uh, data storage and analysis. Uh, and the structure here would be tables. Uh, also columnar storage. So it supports like uh, data in like columnar format. So you have your columns and uh, that helps with also efficient querying um, as well. Pricing model. So this is just a nice perk when you think about choosing BigQuery versus some other technology query spreading model is uh, um, slightly better. Um, security, so yeah, you have role-based access control uh, for data protection. So you as a user of BigQuery, you will have certain roles and certain permissions uh, uh, for a data set or for querying or a project, and you can only do specific uh, role-based access uh, in BigQuery, which is also a pretty good uh, a feature. And it supports a lot of different data formats like CSC, JSON, Agro Parquet, raw data as well. And um, you can store all this kind of data in tables. Uh, so fundamentals, right? Like what is a data set? This is a term used in BigQuery. Uh, it's a structured collection of tables, different views, different models. And this is essentially for organizing and managing your data, right? Any Since Google BigQuery supports SQL. There is some kind of structured uh, data organization we have, and we use tables uh, for storage and organization. Um, it's also the primary mechanism for organ organizing, right? Like you can have your logical groups of data and you can structure them, store them as tables. Uh, and that collection of tables becomes your data set. Um, this basically facilitates data management, granular access control, efficient uh, analysis and stuff like that. Uh, each data set is tied to a GCP project. So you have to create a project in uh, BigQuery and then that can have a data set which has a name space associated with it. And then you have access control boundaries or access uh, ro roles around the, the data set within a project. And then you have specific tables that can be queried. So there, there is a structure to how our data is organized in uh, uh, BigQuery, which is uh, different from other, I guess, database management uh, or, or uh, big data management uh, softwares out there. Uh, data organization, like I said, right? Like grouping, logical grouping of tables and views simplifies management and analysis. And that is the, the way the data is structured is what improves management, analysis, querying, storage, and stuff like that. Um, uh, access control, we already talked about it. Like it basically helps. You can have a very granular level of access to data, read permissions, write permissions, read and write permissions, modifying, drop a table, uh, you know, delete a column, delete a row. Like you can have a lot of granular level um, permissions in BigQuery. Uh, and it's all user or role based. So a person is a user, they have a role, and the role defines what uh, operations they can do within a data set, within a project, in a table, uh, in BigQuery. Um, uh, there is one good night feature of like BigQuery where the geographic location of a data set uh, must be specified upon the creation uh, for performance and compliance and data data residency requirements and stuff like that uh, because it can support multiple regions and multiple data sets. So if you have a lot of large data set and there is some kind of geographic differentiation between the data you collect and store and you need to analyze, that is a feature that's built in in BigQuery, uh, which can help you simplify geographic data. 
Uh, an example would be like an e-commerce analytics data set, right? Like you have to create a project, which is let's say my e-commerce project. You need to create a database where you data set where uh, this data set consists of all the an analytics data related to your e-commerce business, let's say. Uh, you can create some tables like, you know, I have an orders table, a customer's table, a products table, an inventory table, right? So example, amazon.com, right? You have orders, customers, products, inventory. Uh, and then use case would be, okay, like I need to look up data and get information about the order details. Or I need to query the data set uh, and specific tables to get information about like customer demographics, right? Where are my customers from? Um, where do they shop from? Which geography, which country, which city? Um, product performance, you can see how well your products are doing, uh, the details of your product, and then inventory management itself. So this is one good example of like how, if you want to store like amazon.com, right? Like any information, any analytics information about that kind of e-commerce platform, this is how you would want to determine how you, uh, you would want to basically create your project data sets, tables and structure them. So this is the recommendation of the standard of how you would um, view and uh, store um, your data in Google BigQuery. Tables is further level down uh, where uh, it's a core component uh, or core data structure of um, Google BigQuery. Um, it is basically your structured data storage, right? It's a standard table that we know in, in SQL or any kind of uh, DBMS where you have rows and columns, and then your schema is what defines the column names, the data types, the indexing, uh, all of those things. There are specific data types that are supported. Uh, in particular, they are string, integers, float, uh, record, which is a custom data set, and geography. This is, this is again, the geography is something that out of the box is provided only in Google BigQuery, where you can store geography or location-specific facial data. Uh, performance optimizations like uh, time partitioning, clustering, uh, all of these things, uh, because you have large data sets and like petabytes of data, BigQuery promises that, you know, we will do efficient partitioning, we'll do clustering, we'll do efficient indexing. That's how our performance is faster and better. Uh, so they provide these benefits or features. And external tables, so basically you can integrate with external data sources to get data from those systems or sources and load them into BigQuery data set and then query them. So uh, BigQuery provides all this kind of like external integrations with different data sources that are not like BigQuery or that are not BigQuery. Um, example would be weather data, right? Like we have different columns and we would want to do analysis on like our climate research or trends or stuff like that. Uh, product catalog, right? We can store information about different products. We can manage the listings, sales trends, all of those things. So basically an entity and a table associated with it. And then you can define what kind of information you want to store. So this is like your standard table, um, uh, but it also has different kinds of extra um, data types that are supported. And the promise is that, or the assumption is here that you, you're going to store a lot of data, therefore a partition clustering, indexing, uh, query performance is like very fast and efficient. Uh, views, views are basically virtual tables based on SQL queries that uh, the user types, right? So they do not store data physically and but they present dynamic results. So a view is just your result, um, the result of your query in time, but it is not stored or persist persisted as a data set or a table or as a result. Right, so it is just your view. It's just a result of your query in time. Uh, it is useful for simplifying complex queries and enhanced data security, right? Like you have a bunch of different tables you're querying and you want to like join them and have nested queries and figure out, make some sense out of all these different tables you have, uh, make some business sense uh, or logical sense out of the data you have. You might want to write complex queries and the view will present the results of your complex query the way you want. Uh, it's custom, right? Uh, so dynamic data representation, right? Like it's the latest data in underlying tables and uh, it reflects, um, so you have control over what you, view you want and how you want to make sense of the data that is uh, stored. Uh, uh, limits exposure to sensitive data. So views make sure that like sensitive data is not exposed uh, in your querying. Um, yeah, it supports uh, complex SQL querying and uh, logic. And uh, this also uh, helps with uh, the results you get uh, with uh, views is they're cached. 
in in BigQuery, so you can always refer if you're on the same query again because they're cached. The next time it will just be loaded from the cache, right? So Google BigQuery has its own cache, so it basically like fetches um, the result from the cache for those queries. So that again makes this like one of the benefits, right? It makes it efficient uh, and faster. So they actually have a caching. Um, examples are simple, like you know you have your daily sales summary. You can just get basically have run complicated queries to get all sorts of sales data for different products and insights, which you can use for predictive analysis or future decision making. If you want to, uh, you have all these products and all this inventory and all your sales, but you want to understand what are the top performing or most selling products in your inventory or in your catalog, then you can run different joins and asset queries and query a bunch of different tables to find out, hey, these are my top products, right? These uh, that are sold, they are sold within this duration. Uh, these are the, this is the amount of product that's actually being sold. This is a geographic location where it's sold the most. So you can do all sorts of like uh, interesting analysis uh, uh, and the views will just show you all this custom logic, which is not necessarily stored in a table, but uh, this is something that you wanna see like, like dynamically, if I want to understand my top performing products, I just have to write a complicated query and just see it in real time, right? So this is what a view will give you, but none of this is like persisted as a table. This is just a result of your query in real time. Uh, queries, so these are your standard like SQL queries, right? They define the structure of the tables, including names, data types. They are the logical partitioning of your data, right? And it helps improve performance and analytics, storage and stuff like that. BigQuery supports your standard answer SQL for querying. Uh, it supports legacy and standard SQL, so both dialects. Usually the standard SQL is what's preferred. Uh, query optimization, indexing, all of that you can define. And these are the promises that BigQuery makes that are indexing, uh, even if it's beta bytes of data, is pretty uh, amazing. It's like you support nested or repeated fields in, in a, in a in a standard SQL query, right? You can do all of those functions in BigQuery as well. Select statements, aggregate functions, joins, nested functions, uh, user-defined functions for data manipulation, uh, all sorts of stuff that you can do in SQL, you can also do in BigQuery. So BigQuery is all SQL, structured data, tables, uh, and stuff like that. So if you're familiar with SQL and SQL queries, and now that you understand how data is actually structured um, in the in BigQuery, like there is a project data sets tables, you can easily um, uh, run basically uh, queries and get results. Uh, some of the examples would be like you know retrieve all records from a table. So like you need to this is a select star right? You need to specify the data set and the table name. So uh, we we'll look at the console a little bit later, but in BigQuery you have to select the project that you are working off of. One example would be like, uh, let's say I have amazon.com uh, e-commerce data, right? Uh, I would have three projects. One would be production data, which is actual data. One would be developer environment data uh, project. Other would be like a QA environment data project, right? So I would have three different projects that correspond to three different environments because that's how I structured my projects. And then I will just look at different data sets and then tables in all those different projects. So if I want to query, if I'm running some tests, if I'm building a feature, I would probably select a pro the project which is for like dev or QA and then only run uh, queries in that um, uh, project in different data sets uh, for testing, right? So you can do stuff like that. You can organize by environment, you can organize for different things. And then once you select the project in the console, you have to select the data set and the table. So every time you have to specify uh, the data set and uh, the table name. Uh, joins, merges, these are like standard uh, joins that you do in um, in uh, uh, SQL that you can do. You have to select the data set and the table name and then the column name and stuff like that. Uh, so the whole format of uh, uh, joins, um, nested queries, all of that is similar. The difference is that you have to mention the data set and the table name. So there's a dot which represents data set and the table name. And data set can be different, right? It can be like data set. We have a new data set created every day. So today's data set would be like uh, Amazon e-commerce, March 7th. Tomorrow's data set would be Amazon e-commerce data, March 8th. So you would want to come 
query both the data sets and compare if something changed between the two days, right? You can do stuff like that. So you can have different data sets for dates, for example. So depending on your business logic, depending on what your data is, how you make sense out of it, that's how you want to determine what the project should be, what your data set should be, what your tables should be, and when you query it, what kind of data analytics you are doing, right? Uh, what kind of uh, data manipulation you are doing. So knowledge of the context of and the knowledge of the actual data uh, is super important. Uh, BigQuery also promises ETL uh, out of the box for, for, for the data. So when you have large petabytes of data, uh, a basic simple manipulation might not be enough. Um, by enough, I mean it will not be performant, it will not be efficient. Uh, it can really slow down query performance and uh, the results might not be accurate. So with large sets of data, uh, especially unstructured data, one thing that you can do is you can perform extract, transform, and load, which is ETL. This is something that BigQuery promises that they do. So basically BigQuery, when you look at BigQuery data storage, you don't see it as like a database. It's more like a data warehouse. And the primary purpose of a data warehouse or BigQuery um, is you are basically storing um, data so you can do analysis on large data sets. And ideally you want to do all this analysis for some kind of business intelligence. So you can make sense out of your business data and you can use the data for future um, uh, like predictive analytics, or you can make uh, uh, use the data for like better decision, business decision making in the future. So that's the idea um, of BigQuery. So ETL is what will help us do that. So ETL is a process used in data warehousing, where you move data from multiple different sources into a single centralized database or a data warehouse or a data lake, uh, depending on the usage and uh, the size of the data you can have either. This is a general concept. Um, uh, so when it comes to like BigQuery, when you extract, you would be like, okay, I want to get some data from like my Google Cloud Storage or my Google Drive or a CSV file or a JSON file or something that I can upload or integrate with BigQuery, my BigQuery console, and I can retrieve this data from any of my external sources that BigQuery supports, and then I'll transform them. So transform them is basically cleaning and reaching transforming data. So you can use all sorts of uh, complicated and smart Google, uh, sorry, SQL queries where you can, you know, like if you have passwords in your data, you would want to probably mask it. Uh, if you have some data that is not relevant or used anymore, you would want to delete it. Uh, you might want to transform data. So you might want to change the data type or you would want to further structure data. So all of those things, uh, any kind of data transport, uh, transformation or manipulation you can do, that will be the transform phase and then loading, which is actually, once you have a cleaner data, then you can create data sets and tables out of it. Um, and use that for analytics. So um, Big, uh, BigQuery has an, a, an internal data transfer service, which automates a lot of or simplifies a lot of this process for us. And uh, it also supports, it also has like a Google data flow um, integration to support all sorts of ETL workflows. Like you can customize this, uh, your ETL workflow, depending on the data, your source uh, and stuff like that. So BigQuery basically helps automate a lot of this ETL process, making it, um, faster and more efficient for like large data sets, different data sources, the format is different, it might be structured, not structured. Uh, try to make sense out of the data, clean it up a little bit. So when you do querying in big data, you can actually make business sense out of the data that you have cleaned and loaded, right? So basically it enables businesses to efficiently analyze large data sets, derive some insights, make data-driven decisions. Uh, so that's the whole uh, idea of ETL. Some of the examples would be like, uh, you need to an analyze e-commerce data, right? Like you can retrieve some sales data uh, from Google Cloud Storage, let's say from so-and-so dates, then you can you can transform it. So you got all this data, sales data from your storage. Uh, you don't care about all of the data, right? Like just as it is, uh, you want to calculate revenue and you want to calculate customer behavior from the data that you have, right? That's what you are interested in. So you can do some kind of SQL querying, uh, where you calculate the revenue and then you analyze the customer behavior on your project, on your data set, on your table, 
and then whatever result you get is what you would want to now load it into a new table for visualization, right? Now you can create views out of it and you can create reports out of this table. You can even extract this table into a different format if you want, like Google Drive or file or something. So you got some data, then you made some intelligent analysis on that data, which is your transform, and now you have loaded it. Now it's a table that you have created and now you can persist that data. So it's a more intelligent data analysis and storage. And you can do visualization as well with the data that you have. So you, in the last year, we have created a data. Uh, a new data uh, table, basically, uh, which gives us information about revenue and customer behavior um, for the data in between these dates, right? Like a month. Uh, another example would be uh, real-time analytics, right? Like um, you have some kind of streaming data uh, using like BigQuery streaming API, you would want to like ingest it or extract it, right? and then you transform it. So you want to process and analyze like streaming data in real time. So you can only select specific, uh, you only care about event time types and you group by event type, and then you load it where you can create a table or just like view um, uh, your uh, real time events, real time streaming events, right? So you have like, it might be from different data, you can use a streaming API to get it from different sources. You can transform it. In this example, we're only looking at one transformation. There can be multiple transformations that you can do, right? You have one data set. You can do multiple analysis and transformations on the data set, right? You can have a lot of different meanings. And then you can save them or load them independently as well into your data warehouse, right? You can have different data sets. You can have different tables and stuff like that. You have all the freedom to make sense out of uh, raw data. So this would be the ETL process. Some of the other, other examples, just to understand this concept, would be like, I have an OLTP database. I have some log files. I have some web services, which has some APIs that are like uh, giving some kind of response. And all of that might go to my some kind of an ETL engine, um, which will extract all this data, transform it, make some sense out of this. Um, and then like load it into my big query data warehouse where I will do even more analysis, deeper analysis on this clean, clear, uh, more intelligent or transformed uh, data. So this is something that uh, also is possible. This is one example of what you can do, um, what ETL would be. And this, there's another example where we have like even more diff uh, kinds of data sources, extract, transform, load, and you can, Versus this data in a database, a data warehouse, a data lake, wherever you want. So ETL gives you all the power to make sense out of structured or raw data to clean it up. And then you can persist it wherever you want for even deeper levels of analysis um, with your data. Uh, here is a, a screenshot of like, I don't have like license access, so I cannot run it locally by myself, but here is, uh, there are some screenshots of how the BigQuery console looks. So you can select a project name, you can select your data set, and then you can select your database, data, uh, sorry, table. So this is the project name, uh, data set is named applicants, and then the table uh, has a list of all the applicants for finding a particular job, right? So these are people who uh, are applying for, let's say, recruiter position on so-and-so dates, application status, uh, this is a recruiter name who they talk to, all the countries that they applied from and stuff like that. And you can see there are like thousands of records, right? So this is one view. All these tabs you see are different query tabs. So these are basically your query editor. So you might run one query here, one query here, one query here, depending on the, the editor you are in and you run the query, it will show the results, right? So you can have like 10 different query editors, do 10 different things, it's fine. You can, also copy this table result, you can share it, you can delete it, export into like different file formats or even a different data set. Uh, you have a history, you can save some queries which you frequently refer to. So all of that is like a, it's like a proper like full-fledged product which helps you do like a lot of different things. Uh, and it's quite powerful. Uh, so it's all basically like, it's called the Google Cloud Platform uh, where you have the BigQuery console and then you can do a bunch of different things. So this is another example where uh, you have like few di couple different projects 
Uh, you can select the project here. You have Kafun. I think this person has selected the mm -hmm. my project one three eight thousand. You uh, have selected this project. You can see all the projects, but you have to select the one that you are actually actively working on. And then this is your editor. And basically, you're writing a simple select query where you have a sum of all the word counts. Uh, and it is from uh, the BigQuery public data dot samples of Shakespeare table where words are like raisin, right? So stuff like that. So basically, you can uh, you have to specify the project data set, table, and then you can do all sorts of um, um, analysis on the data. Uh, and there are more features, uh, but this is like, it will get quite complicated. Uh, if I talk about like a lot more features, like it has a lot of features, like it's quite powerful because you deal with like petabytes of data and and, and they, they offer lots of great uh, features for like big data. This is another example where it's a simple query you specify like the project, the data set, the table name, and you just want like the top 10 records from this, right? So it's like your project name, your data set name, your table name, and uh, it just shows like top 10 um, records uh, from that table. And you can see how much time uh, it takes for the query. You can also see the cost. Uh, so that also helps make like, and the data that's processed, that also helps you understand like every query you run, how much time it takes, how much data is actually being processed or returned, and also what the costing around it is. So it's very interesting to know because like, if you're in a company, you're thinking about, okay, we have big data, how do you analyze what product we use? Understanding the cost can help you make better decision as to what platform you want to use for like big data analytics. Uh, this here, there are like different projects. They might have their own different data sets. They might have their own different tables. And you can just open a new query editor, select the project, select the data set, and you can like query multiple different things in just the same view. So it's actually pretty, uh, it's actually quite convenient like that. Uh, summary here would be, um, if you are interested in BigQuery or your company uses it, or you have a lot of data you want to anal analyze, you know, thinking about BigQuery, uh, you need to understand when it comes to skills that you have to have like basic understanding of like what databases are, what are tables, what are schemas, what are indexes, uh, you know, column, uh, row structure, uh, different data types, uh, knowledge of like SQL and uh, complex querying, joins, nested queries and stuff like that. Um, when it comes to BigQuery and big data set, you need to understand what ETL process it process is and how it actually works because if you see the image in the to the right uh BigQuery can store here like six different kinds of data uh, in your project or in uh, it can have different projects too but it can store all of this data for your company and you can through qu sql querying and analytics and other things other features you can make sense out of all these different kind of data sets right you might not fully understand what marketing is you might not fully understand what finance is you might not fully understand what logistics is but some of the basic stuff you can totally do uh, right so like uh, big query will let you make sense uh, especially business sense out of out of your data and uh, etl is a very important important component of of uh, that uh, process uh, like I mentioned, right, contextual knowledge. If you have contextual, the whole idea of BigQuery and analytics is you have some kind of data, it has some kind of contextual knowledge or meaning or business domain knowledge, and now you're trying to make even more sense out of it so you can make better business decisions in the future. So you are doing some kind of predictive analysis. You, it, it will help you. It, it makes, basically, you have data-driven decisions that you can make for the future, and BigQuery promises uh, or enables that for, for your large data sets or big data. The application, like I said, right? It provides machine learning capabilities, it supports predictive ana analytics uh, or analysis, which I've mentioned a few times, perform business analytics, right? And reporting and data analysis, like you want to generate reports out of your data, right? Like you can do all of that, especially good for reporting. And then conduct geospatial analysis uh, and help with computer vision. So it's out of box, uh, it supports geospatial data or geographic data uh, and support for that kind of data type. So you can, if you have data which is very heavy on like uh, geography and spatial data and help with computer vision and stuff like that, you can, that would be a good reason also to like choose BigQuery compared to any other platform. And uh, good features or like uh, uh, something that stands out is 
Uh, BigQuery can support uh, up to 20,000 tables. Uh, it can export a file size of results up to one GB, and uh, it supports in-memory caching for faster um, um, uh, reloading of your previous query results. So it supports all of that, and that's why BigQuery like it, it supports petabytes of data storage and uh, analytics and fast indexing. So that makes it a pretty power. It's actually a very powerful tool uh, for analyzing and making sense out of like petabytes of data. And it solves a lot of problems that your standard database management systems have. Uh, so it really, this is like at scale. Uh, uh, you know, everything is at scale, it's performant, it's efficient, and it's quite fast. Yeah, so we are towards the end of the session. Uh, these are some of the links if you're interested in like women who code. Uh, you can uh, refer to these links we'll share in the chat as well. Uh, and uh, thank you for joining us today. I can take some questions now.